Hey guys, welcome back. This is the brand new Yi 4K Plus. This camera is roughly the size of a GoPro, but in my opinion, it is much, much more than just an action camera. However, as an action camera, it is the best action camera that you can get right now, as far as I know. This is becoming my main YouTube filming camera, which for me is amazing. The main reason that a lot of you are gonna wanna get this is that it shoots 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, first of all, what makes this more than an action camera and a super capable pocket camera is incredibly good stabilization built into the camera camera. It will have a crop to it, but it works amazingly well. It looks almost like a tripod when you're not walking. And when you are walking, if you're keeping both hands on it, then it can look a little bit like a stabilizer or sometimes almost like a slider. So absolutely fantastic for something that you want to have in your pocket without carrying a big gimbal or something like that. The screen is absolutely fantastic and so are the controls. Everything is controlled via touch screen and we do have one actual button up here. So much better than GoPros that rely on two button presses. This also has an incredible battery life of over two hours in some recording modes. I'm also super impressed with how well this does in low light. Nice audio quality when you're recording quite close to the camera. This is an audio test at arm's length. This is an audio test uh, a bit closer, about uh, five inch away from my face. I'm talking uh, very quietly next to the camera, about six inches away. And this is something, let's say if I was uh, just sort of outside and just doing a bit of uh, narration for some kind of video, maybe a review or something. And then here it is again with the microphone set to low, same distance from my mouth, about six inches away. Kinky. Most compact cameras for me are just not compact enough for me to put in my pocket and just take out with me every day. Now I know a lot of you are gonna to wanna to see a direct comparison with a GoPro camera and I will have that in another video. <sighs> Built-in screw, which a lot of GoPros don't have. Now this camera has only been available in the UK for a few days, so at the moment it's still new, but there will be an adapter that allows you to plug an external microphone into here. I also love how quickly this thing turns on and off. Now this is the 4K Plus version, the newest one, and the older 4K version did have an issue with the colors being a little bit too warm a lot of the time. And that has been fixed here, so that is fantastic. Now I love the touch controls on this. They are super responsive, and it's also really easy to find stuff in the menu. So here I'm recording a little video, and then we'll play that back. And the thing about this is the playback works really, really well, which is fantastic. Because it's fast and responsive, it actually allows you to use this for filming, I feel that it is a fully capable pocket camera. The screen here is 330 ppi, which is really lovely. And compared to cheap action cameras, this is so much better because as I've mentioned in my other reviews, those just look absolutely terrible and each one of your eyes sees a different color because the viewing angles are so horrible on them. So that's much, much improved here. It is also really, really nice and sharp, so actually enjoyable to use. Of course, it is a small size. It's 2.2 uh, inch, but that's absolutely not a problem for me because I'm not doing focusing with this. We obviously have uh, just a fixed lens on there and nice and bright too. So using it in sunlight so far has been no problem at all. You're gonna want a U3 speed micro SD memory card and this is the one that I got. It was very affordable compared to some of the other ones. This had good reviews on Amazon and is by a reputable company. And if you get a quick release plate small enough then you can pull the battery and memory card out without having to unscrew the quick release plate. Now with my one here, I did have to cut it down a little bit to size. I had to remove about two millimeters from that to make this be able to open all the way. I did want to use this small quick release plate with my larger Gorillapod. So I made a little adapter and I'll post a video about how this was made and I'll link to that down below. However, that is really not necessary. You can just connect a normal quick release plate to it and just take it off when you need to swap out the memory card and the battery. Or you can use this in the waterproof housing and then you just need to take the camera out of the housing and you don't need to unscrew anything. Now this camera is switchable between the NTSC and PAL regions, and that means that you can shoot between 25 and 240 frames per second, depending on the resolution that you're shooting with. Now the 4K60 on this obviously looks fantastic. The 1080p at 120 frames per second is also lovely. I'm really, really pleased with that. The 1080p ultra wide in 90 frames per second also looks fantastic. And the 720p at 240 frames per second also looks surprisingly good considering that it's done with a tiny camera like this. Now this does have a flat color mode. It will underexpose because it's trying to save the highlights. I personally found that I prefer the Yi color option because of the difference in the highlights lights wasn't that huge. Brightness overall and ease of editing 
was just easier with not shooting flat. With the current firmware, this flat mode is limited to only daylight white balance for some weird reason. So hopefully that'll be fixed in the future. But for now, that means that the flat mode is only good if you're using daylight color light or you're shooting out in sunlight. Now let's talk about some of the things that could be improved here. First of all, there are no fine adjustments for the color profiles. Now this has a super wide lens similar to most of the high-end GoPros. So I've not seen any action cameras with a wider lens than this. However, a wider lens is possible. So I would love to see a lens that wide built into a camera like this or as an attachment. This is 1440 and this is wide, no orky lens. And here is the narrow field of view plus the orky lens. I will need to buy a new one because this one's broken. As you can see, it's out of focus. It's pretty amazing though. I love this look. For some things. 1080 Ultra here. Still very wide, but uh, not as wide as the Orky. Now, some of the footage in this video is not super sharp, and that's because a lot of the time I was shooting in slow motion rather than 4K. And also because my camera does have a focusing issue on the left side, which is mostly noticeable on things that are further away from the camera. So I will be returning mine. Luckily, it's from Amazon, so returns are a piece of cake. That's not a problem, but I do have to wait for stock to come in. This ran out of stock within a few hours of being available. So as soon as stock is back in, I'll uh, get a replacement. Now, interestingly, some of the video processing features like the image stabilization and the lens distortion correction actually work together, even in 4K. But not all of them work together and not all of them work in all resolutions and all frame rates. So there is the lens distortion on and there is the lens distortion off. Another thing I would like to see on this is a mode that gives 720p or lower at 25 frames per second because sometimes it might be nice to shoot for a really, really, really long time with this. Now it's really not a big issue because I can set this to 1080p at 25 frames per second and set the quality or the bit rates from the menu to low and that works perfectly fine. Most of the time you don't even see a difference between those. And with those settings, I'll get 11 hours with this uh, 128 gigabyte card. This camera has three different metering modes that you can get to from the menu and metering just means the way that this camera looks at the image and decides on the exposure settings that it's gonna use. Most of the time I just use the average mode, which means that it's looking at the entire image. And then we have center metering, which means that it's going to look at an area in the center of the image and based on that, it's going to decide on the exposure. Now the spot metering mode actually allows you to choose a specific place on the image. By accident, I managed to get the spot metering to enable. So there we can see that I can select for it to meter over here, let's say on the dark area, and then it will go really, really bright. Or I can select for it to meter here on the really bright area. So that is a very useful feature, but I don't know what you need to press to enable this. I did email you about this, and I'll put an update in the description below. Now, so far, I haven't been able to find an option here for a one press on and record, which would be a nice option for being able to just have this turned off and just pressing the button once and having it turn on and start recording instantly. The E4K Plus is a little bit thinner than most action cameras. Now, for me, this size is fantastic because I really do prefer the slimmer size rather than the more square size because that fits in my pocket a lot better. This camera is very, very fast and responsive to use. So for example, I can press record and then I can stop and then press record again. And it's just really, really quick. Now you can get a waterproof case for this. They start from about seven pounds on Amazon. Some other accessories you might wanna get for this are First of all, a windscreen. Now, personally, I might want a windscreen that's also a protective case because I'm not using this underwater much. So something like this, which has a hole for the lens and you can actually buy these intended for action cameras, which I'll link to down below. But basically, it's just a little case that is fluffy and that blocks uh, wind noise and has a hole for the lens. And I might make one myself. I won't be using this one from Seven Oak, which I've taken from my uh, Seven Oak uh, microphone stabilizer here. You can charge this via the USB port. And if you use a good charger, then it's pretty quick. Like with this battery right here from Orki, this charges really quickly and this battery works really, really quickly for my phone as well. And it can be charged from the same type C cable as well. And this camera can be used while it's charging. And you probably wanna pick up some uh, spare batteries as well. So I got a set of two spare batteries with a charger for about 12 pounds on Amazon. It can charge the two that came with it and the original at the same time. So far, these new MOA batteries have been working just as well as the original. I did try these new MOA batteries in my lawnmower and unfortunately it did not work. 
And personally, I'm also going to want a way to clip this onto my pants without needing a sort of bulky clip system. So I'm going to make my own and of course a Gorillapod. I use my Gorillapods for loads of things, for video mostly, and I use them as one of my main stabilization devices. Here I'm using the Gorillapod Action. It has a head built in and I love this thing. It's amazing as a hands-free rig. It's amazing as a shoulder rig, you know, with this up against my chest and these two being used as handles. So as a conclusion, all I can say about this camera is go and get one. I've been wanting a camera like this for so long. And if you want to get one of these, then you can support this channel by getting yours from the links down below. Now, I normally don't ask for likes, but do me a favor, press like on this video because I want to see whether that makes a difference to the amount of views that this gets over time. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe for lots more awesome stuff and some really cool hacks and stuff that I'll be making for this, like uh, cool DIY accessories and stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm.